Hey everyone, Ryan Mallory here. Uh, today I want to go over some some of my my strategies with using Bollinger Bands and how I how I use it for um, booking profits in a stock. It's uh, it's been hugely important for me over the years to my trading success and and knowing when to book gains by using Bollinger Bands. Now. You know, I don't know how everybody else uses them. I have never actually read a book on Bollinger Bands. I understand what they do. They're ba it's basically a standard deviation off of the 20-day moving average. Um, but I don't, I don't, you know, follow the traditional route of how everybody else uses them. Um, I use it for what it is. It's not some kind of magical band. It's basically a standard standard deviation, and you're measuring price by. Um, whether the typical price action of late is within you know x amount of standard deviations in the in the typical case the bollinger bands represent two standard deviations which which represents a good majority of the price action in a stock so when prices get outside the upper bollinger band or lower bollinger band i tend to get a little bit more worrisome particularly to the upside because Stocks have a harder time climbing in a shorter time period than they do falling in a shorter time period. Bad news can drive a stock, you know, instantly down, you know, 30-40% depending on how liquid it is and how volatile the stock is. Whereas for that same stock to climb that much, it would need a a a pretty heavy uh, dose of news and favorable, you know, consecutive days of price action and and everything else. Even then, it's probably not going to get close to that kind of amount. So. Um, that's why they say the stocks go up, you know, the stairs and, and fall down by the elevator. Um, that's just that's just how stocks work. There's the fear the fear emotion is much greater than the greed emotion. So let's look at this Visa, and I'm also going to talk a little bit about price lighting, even though I did a post on it earlier today. But uh, Visa, I got in on it 626. Okay, this price action consolidation um, was looking really good to me. Um, I thought there was a reasonable chance that this thing was going to move higher in the days ahead. So I got in before it actually broke out. I got in at 182.15, and then in the days that followed, we, we broke out. Now, this day had me a little bit worried because I thought, okay, maybe it's just running into this wall of resistance, and it's not going to break out. But lo and behold, with the market bouncing and everything else, this this stock bounced pretty nice as well. So, so we're breaking out even on um, July 3rd, which was a half day of trading, the the, the move higher I wasn't really feeling the need to book gains yet and then on July 5th when the market resumed on Friday we had this huge push outside the upper Bollinger Band and now right off the bat I'm going to be pulling up Bollinger Bands on stocks and seeing where the price action lies with um, that stock and how it's responded in the past when it's traded outside the Bollinger Band so two previous occasions uh, come to mind here okay um, the one that we had here back in March, and then the, again the one we had here in May, where we saw multiple days of it running outside. What gets me the most worried, though, is not these days here where you're halfway in, where it's straddling the Bollinger Band, where half of the action is inside of it and half of it's outside, because you can see here um, that that can actually be a pretty favorable day to to move higher. Now, what gets me always worried about any stock is when we get the the candle action, the entire candle action outside the upper Bollinger Band. And so with Visa, we had that there, okay? But now you can see that based on some previous times where we got completely outside of it, it still ran um, a, another day or two. So I wasn't going to um, the cup, cut my line and, and leave this, the trade right there. So I look back and you have a couple instances here as well, but ultimately they all result in a pullback of some kind. All right. Uh, we got outside a little bit on the Bollinger hand back in uh, May of 2012 and, and shot right back down. So it it's it's not got the best price history of performing outside of it, outside of a few occasions. So you have out of the last 10 times, you probably have about two or three occasions where it actually made a decent price run outside the Bollinger band. Even then it was very limited in how far it actually went. So when we had this pop up today, and I know this chart doesn't look like it now, but if, but if you look at this 30 minute chart here, you can see we popped up pretty good this morning. Um, and I got out at 192.30, um, which was only about 50 cents off the highs or so. I think the highs of the day was 192.77. So I got out about 47 cents off of those highs. 
and uh, made about 5.6% on that trade for just a few days worth of work. Now, this candle at the time though, it gapped actually above Friday's gap, which had gapped above the upper Bollinger Band. So we're like double gap in here, which leads me to think eventually that thing has to, has to fill those gaps. And it went, and it made a nice move and early on I thought, you know what, I, I may actually sell out of this position. It might keep on running another four or five percent. It wouldn't surprise me, but guess what? I didn't even actually look at it after I sold it until later on. I was just sort of curious what it did. Um, but not because I want to have to second guess myself. Honestly, I don't care what a stock does afterwards, um, but this is just a really good educational material to show you the, the, the power of these Bollinger Bands. And it's just why I'm bringing up, you know, the price action after the fact. But I don't care about what a stock does afterwards because it can either go up or down, right? And I can't stop it from doing whatever it wants to do after I get out. What I'm trying to do is just make sure that I get out with profits in hand to consistently profit out for the market. If it wants to go up 30% in the next two days after I book 5.6%, that's its prerogative. And I'm not going to let it affect my trading or or make me upset that I didn't hold on longer because that's just trading, man. As long as you're going to be a trader, you're always going to have stocks that run out, run up higher after you get stopped out or after you take your gains in a stock. That just that's just comes with the territory, and, and that's a, a huge barrier for traders that they can't get past the fact that, that a stock continues to move higher. But guys, I mean, what did you think the stock was going to do when you got out? I mean, stocks are either going to go up or down. I mean, it, it, you can... You can pad your ego by seeing a stock go down after you get out of the fact um, with with a good gains and you can say hey look how great I am or whatever or you you know on the flip side people will get all you know upset with themselves because they see the stock keep rallying after they get I was like I knew I shouldn't have do it man why did I listen to that alert service or man why did I listen to that pundit or or whatever you know or why did I even listen to myself and that's what that's what happens to a lot of traders is they second guess themselves so then they trade change their trading strategy which might actually be a good trading strategy but they change it because of what happened on the last trade, but no two trades are the same. So that's why I say don't worry about the price action after you get out of the fact. Just worry if you're executing your plan, if you're consistently profiting out of the market. And if you aren't, who the heck cares what in the world Visa does after you get out or what Apple does or what Google does or what Amazon does after you get out of the trade? The important part is did you consistently profit. And so that's really what I'm using these Bollinger Bands here to consistently profit. When we got out, when, or when I... When I say we, I talk about the subscribers and everything too. But but when I when I issued the the trade 192.30 to to sell the position after we had I had gone in at 182.15, so a good ten dollars on that Visa trade. Um, the thing just completely sold off, and the reason why is because everybody was booking their gains in it. So uh, just look at this. I mean, it just crashes. I mean, and now you got this big old bearish engulfing pattern, and. You know what? I might have, I might have still stayed in it had I not had these Bollinger Bands, which are once again, I use the two standard deviations with the 20-day moving average. I would not have known that had I, I, I might not have gotten out of it had I not used the Bollinger Band overlays to say, you know what? This stock is getting overheated as much as I'd like to stay in it. As good as this stock is making me feel, and stocks do make people feel good. Uh, as good as it might make me feel, I need to get out because the show's more than likely over based on past precedent and i did i mean you can see here it ran a couple of days three days outside of the upper bollinger band and look what it did you know right after that uh had you gone in on this breakout you basically be walking away with pennies on the dollar had you held and you probably would have freaked out and sold once it broke below the trend line and so instead of you know seeing a stock that moves from 160 up to the 170s you would have seen it come back from 170s back down into the lower 160s so um Bollinger Bands are powerful, not because there's any mystery in them, but it just it shows you standard deviations and what's typical for a stock and what's atypical for a stock. Um, Priceline, today, popular stock, trending on stock twits. Um, it, it has a history at some times of running outside like what we saw back in May, but then on other times, I mean, look at this, boom. It goes way outside the upper Bollinger Band, retracts immediately. Same thing here back in uh, April retracts immediately, and and at the time this stock was making people feel good on on Friday of April twelfth of two thousand thirteen. People were feeling excited going into the weekend, saying this stock is going to make me some serious money. But then uh, the entire next week it goes from seven forty one all the way down to six eighty three. So how many people were probably pretty ticked that they lost all their money off of that trade? Um, 
but yeah, I mean, this just the history and price line dictates that that it's not conducive to to making huge runs outside the upper Bollinger Band. So right here, another sell off as we got outside of it. So what does that mean in in terms of today's price action? Look how far outside the upper Bollinger Band. There is no way I would hold this stock overnight. Now that doesn't mean that history can't change and it do something, but really I want to book gains in a, a consistent and most favorable manner that says I have the best odds of keeping the current gains that I have by selling at this particular moment. Now, I don't think the odds are that this thing's going to keep running up to 900 and but I mean it could, but I'm looking at the information that I have right now with the based on the information I have now based on fast price history, I would be foolish not to take my gains in price line right now. Now, if you really want to make things interesting, Look at what a stock does with three standard deviations on the Bollinger Band. So all you got to do if you use like Warren, just edit the uh, Bollinger Bands and do that right there. This thing is trading like just a shade outside the upper Bollinger Band right now. And <laughs> look at price history. This thing does not go outside the third Bollinger Band. That's really hard to do. I've seen the S&P do it sometimes, and I'll sell every stock I have in my portfolio when we get that far outside the upper Bollinger Band. I just won't risk it. And uh, you can see here, I mean, it's it's touched it a couple of times and sold off. And, and um, you know, probably most recently you had one here on January of 2013 where it retracted pretty good. And then again, here on uh, April 12th, you know, where it retracted. Now, you have it where it sort of wrote it pretty close back in May. But there's always going to be outliers where it defies, defies the odds. But you're really, but those are like home run plays, okay? I'm not swing trading to hit home runs. I'm swing trading to consistently profit because that's how your best traders will make money off this market. Let all the people, let all the noobs and everything out there that want to make big money off of one stock and put all their hopes, dreams, and fantasies into a single stock, let them ride this thing up crazy. But when but when you have a history that shows you stocks outside of this particular occurrence has a hard time performing outside the upper Bollinger Bands or you know when it touches the third, uh, third standard deviation on the Bollinger Band, that, you got to pay attention to that stuff and you got to get out when the going is good. So um, that's all I'm going to say for today. Um, you know, Visa, let's let's look at that, though, real quick before I wrap it up. Um, it touched the top of the the third standard deviation as one. You can see in past past history, it never really fared too well. So, um, you know, now you understand a little bit more of how I use the, the Bollinger Band. It's not a perfect science, but I say it probably does well for me 80 to 90 percent of the time. And uh, you can use Bollinger Bands or any kind of indicator that favorably and that consistently. That's something that, that you uh, have to do. All right, folks. Uh, until next time, over and out.